Recording this with quick time. Quick. What I'm going to do is I've created a new uh, After Effects project by saying new project. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over there uh, to, whoop, I'm not in quick time. Boop, now I'm in After Effects. There we go. And I'm going to choose composition, new composition. If I'm speaking fast, don't worry, you can pause the video. <laughs> Creating a composition, I can give it a name. I've also got the size. So here I've got 1920 by 1080 square pixels, 24 frames per second. Those are some good old standards for some good old video. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to press in two minutes and 30 seconds. Pardon me? This is recorded, right? Yeah. Is this thing on? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to hit OK. That created my composition. That created the timeline at the bottom of the window. What I'm now going to do is import a bunch of videos. I'm going to go up to the file menu. I'm going to choose import. Under the word import, I'm going to choose file. And inside the uh, import file, I can find a bunch of wonderful images. And hopefully, I, no, I'm not going to use raw files. That would not be a good idea. Um, it, it's too bad because that gave me a folder a moment ago. Those are movies or uh, audio. Sorry, I should. One of these ones? Yeah. Wait, there he is. No, that's only two. You should. See, okay, we. You could edit this out of the video, right? Yeah. Not through. Here we go. Twelve images. Randomly acquired off of the desktop of the computer uh, with any any image will do. So um, uh, once again, I'm going to press tilde. Oops. I'm going to sue you if you use that. Tilde. They're going to put this on the internet, apparently. Um, and I can see here these are 1920 by 1080. Oh, uh, no, these are 1500 by 1000. So they might be a bit small. I'll adjust that as I need to. It would be better to have files that are slightly larger than 1920 by 1080 because that is full HD Blu ray video. Super quick slideshow. In just one second, I'm going to select using the shift key, clicking on the first, shift clicking the last file. I'm going to drag these down into the timeline, directly down into the timeline where the labels go, not into the timeline itself, and not onto the images up there. Boop, just like that. If this was 10 videos, 12 videos, or 100, sorry, 10 JPEGs, 20 JPEGs, or 100 JPEGs, this would all work the same way. I'm going to make sure I don't, you can't see this, but I'm raising my hands above my head. Um, I want to make sure that I don't deselect these because if I've got a hundred of them selected, I don't want to have to reselect a hundred of them. Not that that would be that hard because I just have to click the first one, scroll down to the bottom of my layers palette, and shift click the last one to reselect them. I'm going to go to the end of the timeline. If I can't see the end of the timeline, make sure you zoom out using the, uh, the little uh, mountains down there in the bottom. Pew, 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 pew. And now what I'm going to do is grab the very far right end of these layers. I'm going to drag them back. So now I've got them. Now I've got to watch myself here because I made this two minutes and 30 seconds, which means my four second mark is way down here somewhere. So I might need to zoom in a bit more to make sure. Now I'm just arbitrarily picking four seconds. If you wanted them on screen longer, then you would make these longer. If you wanted them to be on the screen shorter, then you would shorten them. And I've got all those. So now what I want to do is I want to make all of these uh, Animate. I want to animate all of them. I also need to scale, uh, scale these up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to access scale. If I'm correct, I believe I can just drop this down and it actually opens up all of those uh, transforms. I can now access the transforms. I click that because they're all selected. If I click that, it'll open up the transform attributes, including anchor point, position, scale, rotation, and transparency. But of course, uh, there's a shortcut for all of these. The letter A for anchor point, P for position, R for rotation, S for scale, and T for transparency or opacity. <laughs> I'm going to press scale just so I can scale them all at once. Um, so I just press the letter S so it opened all those up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scale these all up a little bit so they fill the screen. Um, not great for our ideal cropping in these kinds of situations. We are sitting with a 19, sorry, pardon me, 16 by 9 uh, image size ratio. Um, so if I'm not prepped for that, uh, they might not all fit perfectly, say la vie. I also want to animate these, and in order to animate this program, what we do is we make sure we have press or turn on the animate button. Once again, all of my layers are currently selected. I could do this one layer at a time so I could get a variety of different animations. Maybe animate scale, maybe animate position, maybe slightly animate rotation. Could be some neat effects. Change it up a bit. Maybe I want one image to slightly move to the left and the other image to slightly move to the right. Once again, you can't see me, but I'm doing hand motions to represent the directions that I'm referring to. I'm going to click on the... 
I'm going to click on the stopwatch next to the word scale. And because all of the layers are selected, it is now activated every single one of those layers and at the keyframe wherever my playhead is. My playhead happens to be at the start of all of these files. I'm now going to go to the end of these files by moving the playhead, grabbing that blue uh, line there and dragging to the end of these. And I love shift because it snaps into position when I get to the end of those clips. I am now going to change the scale. Once again, although this isn't quite ideal because these images are slightly smaller than 1920 by 1080, I'm going to go with it anyway. I'm going to scale them up a bit more. Um, so this isn't ideal because they will be getting a little bit blurry or um, pixelated. pixelated, yeah, because we're getting too close. But if I go back now and play this, for example, so I'm just going to hit the space bar to play the files, it then has a nice slow truck in on the photo. Awesome. Now all i got to do is position them. Now, this could take a little while based on the way I've presented this in that I need to move 100 of these. Yes. Uh, so watch this, though. Uh, to make it a little smoother, I'm going to deselect the first one by holding down Command and clicking on it. I'll go to the next 10 or 99, Command click. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I deselected. There we go. Again, move it over. I'm holding down Shift, deselect, move it over, Shift, move it over, Shift, move it over, Shift. Off the top of my head, I don't have a better solution for this. Um, but if you're doing a slideshow... With 100 photos. Um, there we go. And now I got a slow pan in. Presented by Scott Christine's. And it's not bad. You know, uh, even if there's 100, that might take, you know, what does it take? A few like milliseconds per photo to shuffle them all over. Um, you could still, I could probably get through 100 photos in, you know, uh, 10 minutes, you know, like under 10 minutes. I wouldn't want to, but um, yeah, cool. And thus concludes how to quickly, well, we should export this. So what I should do, um, I'm going to just do this real quick, is I'm going to change this work area. So at the very top of the, the uh, work area here, I've got this gray bar, and I'm going to bring this far right end of the gray bar in. And I'm, once again, holding down Shift to snap. And this way, I can tell the program I only want this area of the workspace. So I'm going to right-click on that gray bar. Boop. I'm going to choose Trim Comp to Work Area. Bank. And now it is now the exact length I need it to be. And in this case, it is 48 seconds. I'm going to say File, Export, Add to Render Queue. Sure. Um, so I can grab a text. I can click and drag on the layer. I can add text. Um, I can select it. I can change its color. What's cool too, though, is I can cl click on the eyedropper and I could grab like a shade that's in the image itself, right? Um, that that's kind of hard to read a little bit. So you know what I'm going to do? There's actually a stroke built right in there, and I'm going to add a bit of a stroke, and I might even switch that to a white stroke. Let's say, sorry, flip those white stroke, and here's my green again. I want to go get that green from the car. Darker green. I only work in black. And really, really dark gray. Okay, there we go. And now what I'm going to do is, I've got my text there. Well, uh, text is great, but text is even better when it flies onto the screen. Right? <laughs> so um, once again, I need to change the length of this. So I'm going to shrink this down so it's not the entire length of that. And I'm going to use the position. So uh, I'm going to press the letter P for position. That gives me the position. I'm going to position this. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go a little further down the line. And I'm going to sort of what I call reverse animate. This is where I want it to go. In fact, no, it isn't. I want it to go. That's, that's got some decent contrast. That's where I want it to go. Wait, if I was using my proper. There it is. There's. Um, some safety margins, like title action safe, that tells me, oh, you know what? Um, this is my title safe, is the inside uh, rectangle. The outside rectangle is action safe, the inside one is title safe. So I just want to make sure my word is kind of in there. You know what? I'm okay with the exclamation point going out there because it's not part of the main content that I'm dealing with there. Wonderful. Here's my position. I'm going to tell it, hey, animate this position. Boop. Okay. 
And now it's locked in where this is right now. And now I'm going to go back in time before this moment, and I'm going to remove this off the screen way over here. I was holding down shift so that no matter where my cursor went, up or down, it still just moved left and right, just like Photoshop. And bada bing, bada boom. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over, and you're going to see it animates on to animate some text onto the screen. Is that the, that was your question? Who asked that question? Oh, yeah. There's some text. But moving text is cool, but moving text with motion blur is even cooler. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here. Um, now, this is set currently to what they call um, the, the modes. And we're familiar, some of us are familiar with modes. We, we are all familiar with modes, but the people who are watching this amazing video to give me a thousand subscribers and one million views. <laughs> all of those people might not know about blending modes, and there are blending modes in this program, and that's where it says normal right there. And I could change that so that there's a different kind of blending mode, like hard light or soft light or overlay, so we can see through the lettering. I'm okay with it being normal, though. I'm just going to go back to normal. Um, but I don't want these blending modes, but it's cool to know that they're there, if, you, if you're aware of them, because that can do some really neat stuff. But down at the bottom, we've got toggle switches and modes. And if I click that little tiny button there, it switches to the, t the toggles. Or it switches to the toggle switches and not the modes. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go in and I'm going to choose. It was only funny to me. All right. And I'm going I'm I'm to choose the motion blur here. Click. And that tells this layer, this hello layer, that it should um, have motion blur. We're not going to see it at this point because I haven't turned this button on to enable motion blur for the whole program. So to make sure that your cycles, your CPU cycles, and your computer can perform faster, it doesn't always show you all the bells and whistles. In fact, sometimes when you hit play, everything looks kind of blurry. And it does that because it, it wants to be able to play back smoothly. So if you ever see something that looks like it should look better, it probably is better, and the program's just making it look worse to play back faster and more efficiently. I'm going to turn on the motion blur. Oh, we should see a cool little bit of motion blur on there. And if we watch this animate now from the beginning, whee! it's got a slight blur to it. And as we were saying just a moment ago, you know what? I could right click on that key. I could right click on that keyframe, go to keyframe assistant, and choose easy ease, which is a very simple way of doing this. And now I should have this cool, and it slows down. I made the whooshing noise. <laughs> so if you're ever trying to play with After Effects, you're like, I can never get it to make the whooshing noise. Um, I'm available. <laughs> if you need to. Um, you can add music. Hmm? I could add music. Um, the same way I added a graphic, um, I could import it the same way, uh, file import or double clicking in the uh, window there. And of course, I don't really know where anything is, but there were some, uh, this, these are great names. For projects, that's that's short for assignment. Um, right. Whose assignment is that? Who's the that dumps assignment? No, it, it doesn't. I think Verity names the folders that. Yeah, um, I think it's Verity, right? Anyway, I don't, I don't have, I, I don't know where that MP4 went or the, those music files went. Um, they were Verity. Because I've been asked to do this on the fly, <laughs> and I was not prepared to do recording of this. Click on, on music. There, down there. There's a button. Oh, wait, it just says music? No, we didn't have yeah. no. Anyways, I. But you have something to choose. Oh. <gasps> now, you gotta be careful because you don't wanna just throw any music in there unless it's just for you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But there's a great website out there um, with some really lovely music called the Free Music Archive. If you don't have, um, if you don't have funding to pay for music, um, A, talk to your local musicians. A lot of them will volunteer music for you. B, um, if you have money and budget, then buy music from musicians, support a local artist or a, a, an artist in general, fellow artist. But there's also this free music archive if you're doing schoolwork or uh, free stuff or pro bono volunteer charity. Um, and you can always go on here and mark your calendars for net neutrality day. <laughs> but if I needed some um, music, I could choose genres and I could click on one of these genres and find, a, for instance, an instrumental track and I could download this file here. I don't know what this is, but it's a file from Vortex. No, it's uh, artist. Yeah, no, that's Vortex though, right? I can copy this <coughs> file. I don't want to leave it there.
Um, so maybe I'll do that and then I'll find Vortex and put it in my folder and now I can load it in here. That was not what I meant to do. File, import file, and, and now I can go into my folder. Get out of here. There we go. And in my folder on my desktop here, I've got Vortex. Take it one at the top. No, I put it in videos, didn't I? Yeah. Vortex, Faith, I have no idea. This could be the best music we've ever heard. And we'll, <laughs> I'm going to drag it down here into the timeline, just like as before. And here it is going all the way across. Now you can see, uh, I can see the end here, the little tiny triangle indicating the left hand or the beginning of that video. Sorry, in this case, audio. Over here on the far right, you can see there is no triangle because this actually keeps going and going and going because this song is a lot longer than my 48 seconds. So I'm just going to undo what I just did there. I moved it back. This is kind of neat to see, though, is I can dial this down, dial down audio, and dial down waveform, and you can actually see the music. See the music. Yeah, that's what music looks like. So now what I can do is uh, I can move this over, for example, and I can, because I can see where it, there isn't music, right? It's, it's not, uh, it's not there. So I'm just going to drag this layer over to the left, so the music starts as soon as the video starts. In Adobe, Pre oh, sorry, Adobe After Effects 2017, it now has the ability to play back with audio. Oh, wouldn't it be cool if I took this, you know? Playhead, put it there, for example, and move this over. I'm using shift, snapping. Move this over, maybe line this up, and then here, maybe line this up. Let me just use the playhead again. Right on the beat. <laughs> I'm just going to cheat a little bit and shrink this one instead of uh, matching everything up. Because if I had known about the music earlier, <clears throat> I could have known I was trying to set these up in timing with that. In fact, I could probably calculate exactly how long these clips needed to be right off the bat. So I had them preset because most music, contemporary music, usually sticks to one tempo throughout the whole piece. So I could make them all the exact length between this beat and this beat. You can see the beats, right? Those are those little tiny uh, little mountains in there. So now what happens if I play back? And you can see how much better and more dramatic it is oh, when it yeah. switches on that, that chord change there, which is really cool. So now I've got my animation, I've got my video. Uh, you know what? Anything with a stopwatch can be animated. Uh, so what I'm going to do is take this keyframe here, it's closer to the end, and that means the audio is going to stay at 100% or at, at zero decibels, right? Uh, no, no attenuation. Hmm? Yeah, I'm going to fade it out right here in After Effects, so I don't have to do anything in, in uh, Premiere. Um, but if I didn't know, I could go to Premiere and do this stuff too. And I'm going to go to the end of the video now, and I'm going to drop this down so it's negative infinity or as low as it'll let me go. And you can actually see the audio fading now uh, from before and after. So I could fade it out so that in the last few seconds, it goes away. Cool. So, yeah. Oh, this one only has them uh, scaling up a little bit. Um, and that, that was for speed, right? Because if we want to be able to get all this done as fast as we can, then we'll do the same effect for everything. Um, there, I have other tricks in other software as well. I've got a trick in Premiere to do, also do very quick slideshows, um, because we're here in a class learning about um, After Effects, so I wanted to do it here in After Effects. Uh, what I'm going to do now, though, is finish this off by saying, unless you have any other random requests, can you make it explode? Yeah, we'll make this one explode. Oh. You go to the effects, and you type in explode. No, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It's called Shatter. Um, and then I'll go to shatter and apply shatter to that. And now what happens is this layer is going to blow up if I tell it, show me the final version. And here we go. So here's the chorus. Boom. Shatter. 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 Can I make it rain? Can I make it rain? <laughs> 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 
Well, they do actually have a whole bunch of pre-made simulations. So now this one says raining in there. Um, we, we, I typed in rain in the effects and presets and dragged it down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do snow, and I can do snowfall on this one. I'll drag that down, and now I've got... Um, <laughs> there we go. There's my snow. And uh, the, the, some of these are kind of tiny, but keep in mind, they look tiny because we're looking at one quarter of the screen with the whole image. This image is actually much bigger than this, which is a very misleading thing, right? So it probably looks better bigger, right? Lightning? <laughs> We got advanced lightning. You put lightning on your your video. There's our lightning um, composite on the original. Tell it where you want the first. Can I change the color? Oh yes, we can. Right, and it, it's not animating at the moment. But as I said, anything with a stopwatch could be animated. So, um, what color do you want it? White. Core settings. The core of this is white, and the glow settings are whatever we want them to be. So, if I want to change the color. We can make a pink lightning. Yeah. Um, or again, I can use my eyedropper and choose a color from the existing image, which is kind of neat too. Oh yeah. And now, um, now I want to I want to make it go up here. Wait. So what you're doing it, you grab it and you drop it into the image you want. Onto the image I want. Okay. That's right. Yeah. So I'm just dragging an effect from the effects and presets down in here. I'm finding these so far just by looking them up. So I want to animate this one. So I'm going to go to the beginning, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the what they call. Um, Conductivity state in this case, I'm going to use that one. And I again, it's got a little uh, stopwatch that means it can be animated. I'll click at the beginning of the clip. <coughs> at the beginning of the clip, it is now um, conductivity state zero. I'll go to the end of the clip and I will change that conductivity state to something else. And now, if I go back to the beginning and hit play, <laughs> we got play. That's something <laughs> Can I put it here? Can the sun be electrocuting her <laughs> tattoo? Now, um, I, I, I'm going to like show you that I could type in smoke. Oh, what's smoke? No, tech. This says text. Miscellaneous smoke. What? These are all under the animation presets category, um, and so I don't know that they're going to help here in this situation. But they do have some cool stuff. Can I tell it to compose with the original and um, blend? I can blend it with the. No, I can't. Um, so, although there are methods. Um, to do smoke in this program, and there is ways to sort of simulate that. Uh, if there's no awesome drop it in and have smoke. Uh, as mentioned, just. Um, yeah, and you blend them in, and, and if you go, if you go to like um, YouTube, uh, not necessarily going to get the because YouTube compresses their video, but there are videos on YouTube where people are saying, "Hey, go ahead, um, here's a link to my my original footage, and you can get some smoke um, video footage of smoke." And you could comp compose that over top using the blending modes. So I'm not going to go into smoke. Uh, it's a little more convoluted than dragging and dropping. But, um. Another one. Oh my God, this is cool. It's so cool. Stars. Um, stars. Yeah. Right. We we did a shooting stuff the other day um, with just we took a circle, animated it so fast, oh, yeah. and then we added the motion blur, and it looked like a shooting star, which was really cool. Um, but here's a. Uh, that, this is again not giving me all the options I want. Uh, what about what was just the word star? Oh, ooh, there's more. Um, and uh, here's CC Starburst. That sounds like fun. Ooh. But I'm not seeing the original. So there's that blend with original again. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's like it's almost like the opacity. Eh? It's like you're turning it down and up, and yep. so that you can see through. Yeah. How fast their stars are moving. Phase grid spacing, so how close or far away they are, and how big they are. So let me let me just slow that down. It's getting cheesy, right? 
Love it. Yeah, like a good idea is like pick one. <laughs> like originally it was just going to be scaling up a little bit. So yeah, we're definitely. Um, uh, there's a cool one called Beam. Beam. I like Beam, and I can put Beam on an image, and we get a beam, and you can change this beam where it goes and what direction and what. This is also like the, one of the coolest ways to do. Uh, what do they call um, lightsabers? But. There we go. So let me just put this here and this here. Okay. And then, so when it comes in, um, what I'm going to do is, is go to the length, for example, and turn the length down. So at the beginning of the clip, it's zero. In the middle, it'll go up to 100%. And then I get to the right. And thankfully, they pre-made this one uh, pink already, so we don't have to change any colors there. Here we go. Now I got my the car there. <laughs> and we're just randomly typing in things we think are neat and then putting them in there. There's there's like some neat like uh, turbulent stuff, like there's this thing called turbulent displace, right? I don't know if you've heard of displacement, but here look at that. And then what I'm going to do is, um, again, I'm going to, in this case, just use evolution. I'm going to move down here. I'm going to change the evolution. Let's just say one. So with one full revolution. And now we've got this crazy. Um, that's probably a bit much, I think. Um, maybe if that was maybe just 30 degrees. And maybe if I, I drop the amount down so it's not quite as obvious what's happening here. And we can get a very subtle. Not subtle enough. Sorry, that's too subtle. There we go. Let's try that and see what happens. This weird slow warping. Um, let's increase that amount a little bit more. So it's a little more obvious what's happening. But then let's increase the size. And see if we can just get some. And that's great. If you do a wedding and then like about 75% of the way through the, the wedding slideshow, one of the images just starts warping like that. The guests start checking their drinks. They don't know what's going on. <laughs> Scott. <laughs> Scott. Can we do like animation like you did this, but for example, mask? Yeah. Just like part of the photo have this animation? Check it out. So here's my original, right? I'm going to control C, control V. Okay, so I've copied those. I just I like just copy and paste right there. Put another copy of that layer on top of the other one. Perfect. Wait, wait. Nope. Yeah. Control C, Control V. The top one has those effects. The bottom one does too. So what I'm going to do is go to the bottom one. I'm going to click on that displace. I'm going to delete it. Okay. So now the top one has that weird warping effect. The bottom one, if I hide it, oh boy. There it is. It does not, right? So you can see on and off with the original and the other one. So what I could do is I could take this top one, and one of my favorite things about After Effects versus um, other uh, illustration software is how easy it is to make a mask. To create a mask, you simply need to have a layer selected, and then go to the mask tool at the top here and choose a lips tool, or star, or any of those shapes for that matter. In fact, you can even draw a random shape using the pen tool if you'd like as well. Any of these vector tools will allow you to do that. So any of these shape tools, and uh, the pen tool as well. Then you can draw a shape. And what's cool is you can use those same shortcuts, like shift to constrain the proportions and whatnot, space bar to move it around while you're drawing. This, there's a very interesting effect happening here. Um, <laughs> so it's warping the mask. So that's because you put a mask. It's warping the mask and it's leaving the original. Can you change your mask? Yes, I can. Um, this mask has attributes. In the layers area, if I drop that down, there's the mask. I'm just going to hide the layer below it so you guys can see what's happening here. There's the mask path, the mask feather. Right? You can blend it in so it's not as obvious that it was a star. Um, and there's also mask opacity, so how strong of an effect. And there's even mask expansion, where you can expand or contract the shape. And your question was... Oh, no. the mask. The question, yes. There's the invert. So uh, maybe I'll... Increase the mask now, unhide the below layer, and now the outside of that shape. Yeah. 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 
Hear how it, the music's going with the trippiness here. Is that um, what's happening is the processor on the computer is being challenged to try and play this back up to speed, and it can't. So it just starts to go slower and slower. Yeah. If I wanted to hear it now, but look, it's all green now because it played through it once. So it's got that green bar there. That means it's 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 got it in its RAM. It's in the memory, so I can press play. It should now play back without issues. Cool. If I click up here and press tilde, is that what you mean? Yeah. The one next to, um, it's, the, it's the key next to the number one, to the left of number one. Also found above, what is it, the N in Canyon? Right? Yeah? Is that too much? I remember last time you filled your scene up the other I know that there was. Smoke? Yeah, well, you guys just want smoke. Here we go. No, let's do it. Let's do it, right? Why don't we put it all on the record? Um, I'm putting this on my YouTube channel, though, for the record. This is on my YouTube channel. I need your permission to put these on there. Oh, yeah. We all heard him say verbally. No, okay. Anyway, um, we talked about smoke. That's what everybody wants. Everyone wants uh, some kind of smoke effect. Uh, not the movie. You know? um, so I'm going to go to videos. You know what? I'm going to go to. Sorry? <laughs> This, that's how you get to YouTube, is you type <laughs> in YouTube into Google. <laughs> I can't believe I just did that. Okay, this is a website called YouTube, and if I type in smoke, um, it'll, it'll find me videos of smoke, but not exactly what I want. I want smoke stock footage or something like that, right? And the other thing is I want to get footage I know I have permission to use. I don't want to use uh, Rose images without his permission, um, so I will have to verify that I can release this uh, before I put it up online, because I'm not going to steal from another artist. Uh, that would be wrong. So what I'm going to do is, uh, when you search for something on YouTube, there is this filters area here. If you drop down filters, there's an option in here that says Creative Commons. Creative Commons is a lot like copyleft instead of copyright. And, for, and for these are artists sharing with artists, saying, hey, I want you to use this stuff. Like, there's this other website that's awesome for sound effects. If we needed a lightning bolt sound effect or electricity sound effect, I could go to freesound.org. And freesound.org is awesome for sound effects. So uh, free music archive is great for free music. Freesound.org is great for waiting for the website. No, that's our internet here. That's not. <laughs> okay. Now here, I've chosen Creative Commons. <laughs> and now I've got a filter saying find free stock footage with Creative Commons. And I can scroll through these videos. And theoretically, um, these are available for me to be able to use. Um, so I'll just keep on scrolling. I like uh, the easiest ones to use would be the ones that are like, uh, a smoke, uh, like gray smoke on a black background. Um, there's no green screening involved or anything like that. Um, and so this, I think, will work fine for me. And what I'm going to do is download this video. Sometimes they say, hey, there's uh, another link to their to their website or something like that. This one doesn't. So is this still it? Yeah, there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the link to this video. Before YouTube? Yeah. Oh, well, that. Um, I, I'm not use this. I, I use. I often use one called keepvid.com. K e e p v i d dot com. Um, this is another one. So how do I download it? Here, the button that says download video. Yeah. Is that how I? <laughs> so theoretically, if I click that. It sends me a virus. No, no, no. <laughs> no, just an advertisement. Just an advertisement. That's not so bad. I'm, I'm, I, I don't mind that. That's, that's okay. Um, now I'm going to show in Finder. Once again, I want to take this and let's see if it lets me this time. No, it hates me. Um, so I'll put that on the desktop and I'm going to drag that video now back into my video folder. And as before, I'm going to um, uh, import that into After Effects. Here you can see uh, freesound.org. Uh, I mean, freesound.org is a series of uh, uh, individuals who have chosen to give away free sound effects. Um, and it's really neat. So if I needed lightning, I'm not going to go with this, but I'm just going to type in lightning. I can spell. <laughs> there we go. Lightning. And you know what? The thing is with Foley and sound effects and stuff like that, um, is that sometimes you don't use the sound effects slow down internet. Slow down. Sometimes um, the sound effects you need aren't the words you need to look for. For instance, if I wanted to find a good lightning noise, I might actually search something for something called a Jacob's Ladder. Really? Yeah. Uh, I'll show you. Um, and I don't mean the, the, uh, the movie starring Tim. Oh, no. What's that? Tim. 
Robbins. Jim Robbins. Yes. Jim Robbins. Hot Sucker Proxies. Uh, he, he's in a, a very, very uh, a disturbing movie called uh, Jacob's Ladder. And that's not the Jacob's Ladder I'm referring to. Um, and here's Scott. Here's video. And here's my smoke. What's this? Royalty free. Wait, I already had smoke footage. <laughs> I already downloaded this. Okay, and now I can drag the smoke footage in there. I can place the smoke footage wherever I want. So here's my, my, my cool effect. And then the smoke comes in front of it. But what I can do is take this footage and um, I can scale it up. So this, this is how these guys give, they give away the uh, high definition footage and often want you to pay for the full high definition footage, right? Or, the, or for the 4K footage and things like that. So um, that's okay, they're being nice to give away this. I'm just gonna scale it up a bit, that's all right with me. Now, this isn't uh, mixing with the images below that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change the blending mode. If I can't see the blending mode, I'm gonna go down here to the bottom where it says toggle switches and modes, and I'm gonna switch from the switches to the modes, and then I'm gonna change the smoke uh, blending mode from normal to screen, or maybe even add. And those will give very similar results. And what we can see here now is going to interact. Once again, you're getting the whole machine slow down. I wonder how that affects the recording. <laughs> but now that it's played through once, you can play it back. No problem. Because it's got three. <laughs> cool beans. All of the effects in, in the, the palette. All the effects that exist because, I mean, there's so many things. Can you just, just kind of no. um, down? There is a way. Um, I think in 2017 they've now added it to the options button where you can go and choose browse presets. Yeah. Okay. But I just want to point out that presets are just this one section. It's not all of the effects. The presets are mainly just collections of existing effects combined together to make cool stuff happen. So I think that the smoke, or not the smoke, um, But if I go to browse writing. presets, <clears throat> what it does is it launches Bridge, yeah. And inside of Bridge, it goes into that folder, and then Bridge can preview pretty much every Adobe product format file and stuff like that. So um, once it launches up, it's just gonna show me um, those things. So here's Bridge, and uh, oh, it, uh, yeah, perfect. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, no, there it goes. And if I'm lucky, it took me right to the presets folder. So this isn't going to show you all of the effects, but this will show you a lot of these presets, which are really neat. And you can, I believe, click on them, and there should be a preview tab here up in the top right. And I believe, I believe it's just taking a little while to load is what's happening. There we go. And then it plays it. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> I don't, I don't see anything happening. That's thinking of I have asked it to do a fair amount in a little bit of time. And that's why we're hearing it slow down. And it's been trying to record this whole thing this whole time. So, um, yeah, let's feel bad for the computer. A moment of silence, please. Hey. Um, yeah, anyways, that is breaking. So I'm going to do one last thing. I say file export, just so we've seen this. What I'm going to do, though, just to speed things up, because I am doing everything we've seen so far in real time, I'm going to choose add to render queue. And instead of exporting the whole video, I'm going into... Mm -mm. I'm going to, yeah, so I'm just going to those render settings. I'm going into time span. Instead of exporting the whole thing, I'm just going to custom export because uh, I just I just don't want to waste too much time exporting. So I'm just going to export eight seconds worth of this video so we can see a little bit of it. And I'm going to hit OK. So normally I wouldn't have to do that, but just to speed up uh, the, the demonstration here, I've done that. So I would normally not change anything over here on the left-hand columns there, but I would always change output two and click on comp one, click on that till where I want it to export. I'm going to call this um, amazing slideshow in 10 seconds. Because uh, they couldn't build that into the new engine uh, without having to seriously delay the delivery of the product. So they just removed it and now we have a, a, a multi-stage process. I don't mind this to be honest. 
once you get it into your workflow. And um, although I haven't, I'm, and I'm not going to show you this, there is this really neat thing in, um, so once I've got the output, I can render, there's a really neat thing in uh, Adobe Media Encoder where you can actually set it to watch a folder. Okay, And so you can have this Media Encoder program, I'm not going to launch it, I'm just going to use Premiere to show you how to do this in Premiere, but uh, Adobe Media Encoder is drag and drop. You drag the file in, you tell it, it's, whoop, you tell it H.264, and then uh, and then it and then you can export any anything that's been imported in there can be exported. Um, but Premiere is really simple too. So uh, the problem is, is After Effects exports these giant videos. Hey Kurt, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to import my media or say file import. So I'm just using Premiere as in lieu of Adobe Media Encoder. They both would do the same thing. Sorry, when you open Premiere, is going to ask you like, do you want to create a new project? Yeah. So I just created a new project. Oh, yeah. And, and I, I actually, uh, yeah, I should direct it to the folder that I'm working the same setting, or do you yep. the setting I don't even need to worry about settings. In fact, I haven't even created a sequence. I, I'm not, I don't even have a timeline. All I'm doing is creating a new project, um, and, and I should put that in my the same folder with the slideshow, but uh, it's really irrelevant, because I'm just using this to go in and out. So I'm going to say File, Import. I choose the video that I created, which is under Video. I believe, and we called it Amazing Slideshow in 10 Seconds. Because this video is 10 seconds. I showed you. Boom. 10 seconds slideshow. Okay, no, maybe it's been a little longer than 10 seconds um, by a little bit. But there's a video inside of Premiere, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say File, Export. All I'm going to do is import it, click on the file in the project window, and I'm going to choose File, Export. And I'm going to go, Media. And then I'm going to tell it, hey, go to H.264 at the very top there. And then I'm going to I'm going to choose output name, and then I'm going to go amazing slideshow in ten seconds. I'm going to tell it where do I want it to save, and once again I'm going to make sure it's in the right folder. And in this case, I'm going to once again choose my video folder and save it in there. I can save it as the same name because it's going to have a different suffix, MP4 instead of MLV. This is though going to uh, considerably shrink it down to a better size. So we're going to compare the two in just one moment. I'm just going to hit export. I'm going to pop over to the Finder. Pardon me? Is that what happened? So here, um, now the other one, it made that lovely noise. I like that about After Effects if you're ready for it. <laughs> uh, if you're not ready for it, it's kind of scary. What was it? was making noise? Um, but this one makes a little boop uh, as well. And now I can show you in Finder here. There's our slideshow in MOV. It's 1.1 gigabytes. We just shrunk that down to one uh, point. Sorry, 12.6. I can read 12.6 megabytes. <laughs> So almost a tenth of the size. So it's definitely worth it to put it through that last process there, in and out of Premiere to shrink it down. Uh, I would never, um, unless I needed to send raw files, I would never be working with the, the 1.1 gigabyte file sizes. In fact, I was transferring files um, across to the UK, and uh, I actually ha I converted all my files to smaller versions of them, even though they're not raw. Um, a lot of these H.264s will serve for most people's purposes. Um, not, they don't look all compressed. They're, they're still pretty decent and a lot smaller than they were. If I was going to send it across the ocean um, to a visual effects company, I would want to find a way to transfer these in as uncompressed as possible. Cargo. Hmm? Cargo. 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 Cargo, yeah, yes. Or peer-to-peer uh, -peer or torrent or um, just a, a, a way to transfer little bits at a time rather than trying to send a, a giant Four, mega, or four gigabyte file in one go. Right? Uh, FTP, right? That was another option. Upload it to your FTP on your website, and then someone else could download it from the FTP. One of the best, I, I think what I would direct people to first um, would be uh, YouTube or, or Vimeo. Okay, so if you've got a YouTube video, um, like David Hockney joined a photo photograph, the, you, you could go down here where it says share. So upload your video to your YouTube, right? go to share, and inside of the share area, not this link, because this is just a nice link to send to your buddies on any other social media accounts or to copy and paste, but there's embed right there. And if I chose embed, I could take this code, in fact, I'll do this, copy this code, um, I'm going to go to... Um, It's okay, that'll work. I figured out, a, we did the web class with the other group, and I, I figured out how to get around the 
problems we had with text edit, uh, and this was the trick. Uh, text edit's great for coding in HTML and whatnot, but um, my, the problem I was having was it, it was already in RTF. So you just say format make plain text, and that'll help right there. And then when I say file save, there's a whole bunch of other problems. Oh, and you just uncheck these checkboxes and replace TXT with HTML. If I give it a good name, test. Uh, I'm in the Scott folder test.html. I paste that, that embedding code in there. I might actually need this to be um, an HTML file. So just to simulate that. Uh, then we need a body, right? And then we go after all of that code, body, oh, close, right? And then I'm gonna go HTML. So just to quickly get that out of the way, save that file. Hopefully that's saved in here. Um, there's my test.html if I open that up. Hopefully what we're seeing here is an embedded YouTube video inside of it. There are also other codes you could include, um, uh, I believe. We could look into things like autoplay and options like that. Um, so sometimes when you're in these videos, you can go to show more and you can say, hey, you know what, I want to do more things with my videos. And there's options. Not sure. I don't know. See, like if I don't need the name and stuff, then I'll turn those off. Don't show the controls. Um, don't show suggested videos, things like that. See, there's a few options there. You can also do a very similar thing with embedding in Vimeo. Um, I do, uh, I love Vimeo as much as I love YouTube. YouTube is great for being discovered and found because it is one of the top search engines out there. Vimeo has less compression than YouTube, so the, it'll retain a bit more quality if you upload to, YouTube, to Vimeo rather than uh, YouTube. So if I went and wanted this video instead, for example, I could go down here to share, and in here's our my 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 content. And if I'm lucky, I can go to show options, and down here you can see some really lovely options like autoplay, loop, don't show the text, um, don't put any of that other information in there. Can I not turn the controls on? Well, they won't show up when it's playing anyway. And so I can grab that, copy that, paste it into the text edit where to go. There it goes. And I'll put that just underneath my other video. Save the file. Pop back over here and show you by refreshing. There's both of those. No, no, no. So it, one of the easiest ways to import things is through the existing technology we already have. But because you guys have already learned a little bit about the internet and the World Wide Web, were I to go to an additional tab, refresh our memories about our lovely friend w3schools.com, and pop back over here to, this is a really fast way to make a slideshow, by the way. Just like that, we just, just like that. Uh, what are we, 20 minutes into this now? Um, uh, into the HTML tag reference. That should have worked, but um, there we go. It did work. Uh, there is a video tag, um, and now with HTML5, there is a way to embed video right in there. So you could, if you were coding your website and things like that. If you have a Squarespace, WordPress, um, or any kind of like pre made template systems, often they have built in, hey, add media. You just click the add media button, you select your video file, it'll pop it in there too. But you so. need to have that video on your server, right? Yes. Oh no, but a lot of them, like WordPress and stuff, will up, it'll, it'll allow you to upload, right? right? So that, just like you would a photo. If I'm just recording, I need to put it on my server and just that To that location, yeah. yeah. And that's another reason why Vimeo and YouTube are great, because they've already got the server there for you. Also, the, every time someone watches this video now, I get a hit on my YouTube channel, oh, yeah. right? And if that was useful or powerful or, or important to me, um, that could be good too. Thank you for listening. This has been make a make a, an easy, simple slideshow. What did, we were talking about HTML. We finished it. Okay, but yeah, you can do all this stuff, and you can rewind back to the beginning where we actually talk about the slideshow um, or learn about lasers and all this cool stuff. They can't see you standing. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry.